Hello, friends. Welcome to a new happy learning video. Take a look at these images. Today, we're going to see a place where it's both really hot and very, very cold. And where it hardly ever rains. Do you know which place it is? It's the desert. Deserts are arid places where there often appears to be no life. Yet they are home to amazing plants and animals which have had to develop incredible abilities in order to survive. But what makes a place a desert? It's not the sand, no. Nor is it the heat. It's actually the scarcity of a fundamental liquid, water. If a place receives an average of 25 centimeters of rainfall per year, which is very, very little, then we say that that place is a desert. Deserts cover one fifth of our planet. The most important are the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Desert, the Australian Desert, the Gobi Desert, and the Atacama Desert. But there are also two very special deserts because they are frozen. The Arctic and the Antarctic Deserts. The world's largest hot desert is the famous Sahara Desert. Here, the temperatures can reach 57 degrees Celsius during the day. Now that's hot, but at night, they can drop to 10 degrees below zero. Freezing! This huge temperature change occurs because it's so dry that the clouds can't even form. And the clouds not only produce rain, but also act as a shield. They protect us from the heat of the sun's rays. And at night, they prevent heat from escaping. The few plants in the desert are very special because they have had to adapt to the lack of water in order to live. Some store all the water they get in their stems, like these cacti. Others extend roots for many, many meters until they find some moisture. Some remain in a dormant state, as if they were asleep. And when a few raindrops fall, they turn the desert into a garden. How beautiful! Although the truth is, they don't last very long. The animals that live in the desert are also very interesting. Look at these camels. Their humps are full of fat. They are like a reservoir of moisture, and so they can go for up to 10 days without drinking. Other animals, like this lizard or this snake, prefer to hide during the day and come out at night to hunt. Deserts are also home to people like nomadic tribes that never stop traveling from one place to another. Their clothes protect them from the heat and the frequent sandstorms. What a hard life! As we said at the beginning, there are frozen deserts. They are in the polar areas of the Arctic and Antarctica. They are huge expanses of ice where it hardly rains and where it's very cold. Moreover, did you know that for many months of the year, in frozen deserts, there is almost no light? Most plants cannot photosynthesize. That's why there are only mosses and lichens. The animals that live in frozen deserts have thick layers of fat and lots of fur or feathers to withstand the cold like these polar bears, this arctic fox, and these penguins. 
Did you know that deserts are growing? Look at these pictures. Deforestation, fires and water pollution are turning places full of life into dry and barren land where nothing grows anymore, where it's very difficult for life to prosper. That's why Happy Learning is asking you to take care of the environment. Don't waste water and recycle as much as you can to avoid pollution. All together, we can make sure that deserts do not advance one more centimetre. If we do this, our planet and all living things will thank us. Goodbye, friends. See you in the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Why do camels and dromedaries have humps? Although a lot of people think that humps in camels and dromedaries are used to store water, this is not true. The humps are indeed tanks, but not water tanks, but fat. When they have to spend a long time without eating or drinking, they use the fat in their humps as a source of energy to survive. Thanks to their humps, camels and dromedaries can stunt up to two weeks without eating. And do you know how long they can last without drinking? They can be up to various weeks without drinking. But what is true is that when they find water, they're able to drink up to 135 litres in one go in only 13 minutes. It's incredible! How can they drink that fast? An important thing you need to know is that wild camels are in danger of extinction. Contemporarily, there are only 950 camels in the wild. So, as we always say, we need to take care and respect the nature. This is the only way we'll be able to protect animals, plants and ourselves. Goodbye friends, see you in the next Happy Learning video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends, welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Look at these images. Wow, what a tall mountain! Hey, and what a cool island! Ah, oh, and how dizzy! That's quite a cliff! It even has a small waterfall! All this that we have seen are relief elements. But what exactly is a relief? As you can see, the shapes of the Earth's surface are not always the same. Sometimes the train we see is super flat. Other times it is more undulated with hills and mountains. And others are surrounded by seas like this island. Well, that is the relief. The different shapes that the surface of the Earth has, including the bottom of the sea. As the Earth is very, very large, to study the relief, we have divided it in two types. Inland relief and coastal relief. The differences between one and the other is pretty obvious, don't you think? The inland relief is, as its name suggests, the one that is in the interior and has three forms of relief. The mountains, which are great elevations of land. Valleys, which is the land located between the mountains, like the ones where these cows live. And the plains, that are, as its name suggests, great extensions of very flat land. Plains are rather plain. It's a trick to remember. The coastal relief 
is the one that is next to the sea. That is to say, on the coast. In it, we can find beautiful beaches where we can see these rowdy seagulls. We can also see high cliffs. A group of islands full of palm trees known as archipelagos and many other forms of reliefs. Now, let's review. Relief is the different shapes of the Earth's surface, including the seabed. We can divide it into two types of relief. Inland relief, such as mountains, and coastal relief, such as beaches. But before we say goodbye, on behalf of Happy Learning, we want to tell you that you have to take care and protect nature. We have already seen how beautiful the mountains, valleys, beaches, and all forms of reliefs are. But sadly, many times we find them full of garbage and dirt. So, please recycle everything you can. Do not throw plastic or any kind of waste on the ground and pollute as little as possible. Nature and all living beings on Earth will thank you for it. Goodbye, friends. Until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends, welcome to a new Happy Learning video. We're going to stride across the land. We're going to climb mountains and hike along endless plains we're going to go to the edge of the planet and hop from one island to another. Today we're going to get to know its relief. The relief is much more than a geographic book full of maps and colors. Relief is this! Look! It's nothing more or less than all the different landforms of the Earth's surface. These shapes that you can see are the result of millions and millions of years of work by internal and external agents. The internal agents are the movements that take place inside the Earth when tectonic plates move together and separate, modifying the Earth's crust. And the external agents, on the other hand, can be rain, wind, or waves that crash, wearing down and even remodeling the land, until they create these huge cliffs. Yes, the relief has many forms, and to get to know them, we are going to divide them in two groups. Inland relief and coastal relief. Inland relief is that which is not in contact with the sea. Here we can find mountains, plateaus, valleys and plains. The mountains which are large elevations of land sometimes rise so high that they are lost in the clouds. The mountains, depending on how they are grouped together, form mountain ranges or ranges of hills. This one you see is the Andes Mountains in South America. 
where this family of llamas live. Hey guys, is it cold up there? Mountains sometimes wear down and form plateaus. That is, flat surfaces that are at a high altitude. Like the plateau of Ronda that looks like a city perched in a mountain, doesn't it? Between mountains lie valleys, which are usually very fertile because it is where the rivers flow through. And these that you can see here are plains, which, as their name suggests, are large flat areas. Hmm? The plains are perfect for growing crops, raising livestock or for running around. The coastal relief is found in the areas closest to the sea. Here we find beaches, cliffs, peninsulas, capes, gulfs. <laughs> and look, this sandcastle is pretty cool, isn't it? Cliffs are high, rocky terrains where the land meets the sea. For example, the famous cliffs of Dover in England. Have you seen how white the rocks are? They look like they've been painted. In the coastal relief, we also find peninsulas, which are areas surrounded by the sea on all sides except for one. The piece of land which joins to the continent is called an isthmus. The Iberian Peninsula, where Spain and Portugal are located, is one of my favorites. Capes are areas of land that enters the sea. They look like unfinished bridges, don't they? Gulfs are just the opposite of capes and are formed when the sea enters the land. See the difference? Gulf, Cape. Gulf, Cape. See it? But before we finish talking about coastal reliefs, we must mention islands. They are portions of land completely surrounded by water. Archipelagos is what we call many islands in a cluster. The Japanese archipelagos, for example, has 6,852 islands. Wow, that's a lot. Let's review what we have learnt. Relief is the set of landforms on the Earth's surface. We can divide it into two groups, inland relief and coastal relief. Inland relief has mountains, plateaus, valleys and plains. Coastal relief has beaches, cliffs, peninsulas, capes, gulfs, islands and archipelagos. Have you noticed how varied our Earth's reliefs are? The next time you see a physical map full of green and brown colors, remember that each of these relief shades refers to a different landscape, a place that nature has shaped over a long, long time so that we can take care of it, respect it, and enjoy our wonderful planet. Goodbye, friends. Until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.